Nate, I, I think Uh-oh. most Broncos fans. Stuff happens when you start thinking. I know. And, and I'm looking at, you know, the, the crowd today at the berm, which I think is is a more sparse than before. Yeah, and it's I, a Tuesday. And I think that, that there is a lot with fans of this team that understand that whether the Broncos say they're doing it or not, they are rebuilding. Correct. And that's probably the right thing to do, given this team has basically figured they can shortcut it for, for most of a decade. But there is still that subset of fans that have the orange colored glasses that are convinced that the Broncos just need one more thing and they're off to the Super Bowl. Yeah. And that's where I guess I want to look at this because Brandon Ayuk over in San Francisco is in the midst of a contract, uh, acrimonious contract. Go to Cleveland. And it appears that the Niners at this point are basically even as valuable as, as Ayuk has been. You guys could look to the Kansas City Chiefs who thought they're going to move on from Tyreek Hill. That's crazy. All they did was go on to win the Super Bowl. So the, the Niners have decided apparently that it may be time to move on from how you can trade it. Broncos fans are clamoring all over social media and even a, a little bit in the media saying, well, the Broncos should get in on that. You talked about the depth in the wide receiver room. Now, granted, talent, the production has not yet been there. You haven't done it at the NFL level. But one, I don't know if Denver has the draft ammunition to trade for Ayuka, even if they wanted to necessarily, because you still are just getting picks back from all the trades you've made in previous years. Two, Brandon Ayuk would make this team how many wins better? I would quite frankly argue zero. The wide receiver is the most dependent position on the football field. For Broncos fans, you've got to relax. I understand it's frustrating to get through the rebuild here, but just saying trade for this guy or re-sign this guy or go get Justin Simmons back. One, this doesn't happen in a vacuum. It's not as if there are no other teams involved. There are 31 other teams involved. And two, is it going to make that much of a difference for the Broncos? So in the IU case, it makes no sense for the Broncos to make that trade. Now that that there's frustration around uh, Justin Simmons' release that still exists, Simmons is still looking for a job. Caden Stearns, the Broncos moved on. It's like, well, you have to go get Justin Simmons back. Well, Justin Simmons has to want to come back. These things don't just happen. And, and at this stage, for Broncos fans... I get the idea of going, wow, okay, this guy's available. I need to go get him. But it's it's not Madden. You don't just grab guys with a with a, a, a 91 rating and your team all of a sudden becomes better. And there's a cost going forward. So I, I guess I look at it, Nate, and I'm trying to figure out with fans how to how to sort of talk them down from the ledge here because this team isn't going to the Super Bowl this year with or without Brandon Ayuk, but you could find your way in a longer rebuild by making those trades. I'm going to oversimplify it for some of the stupid people that are out there. you have to sign him too. The Niners, if the Niners can't sign yeah. him, what do you think the Broncos let me, are going Let me to? oversimplify it for some of the stupid people that are out there, okay? And there are plenty of you that are stupid um, and need this pointed out to you. You know what one of my favorite things is? When you see people that are drooling all over the brand new 2024 Jeep Wrangler. Oh, my God. So nice. Look at the color scheme you got, the uh, package that went with it. Yeah, and you drive an 87 Accord. Do you know why? Because you can't afford it. Just because it's out there doesn't mean you get to have it. End, End of story. This team is in salary cap hell because of Russell Wilson. Okay. as soon as they get past that, we can have a conversation. And guess what? This time next year, there's going to be some other flashy, shiny object, just like Brandon Ayuk, that you can go out there and get. But this team doesn't need him right now, nor can they afford him. So settle the bleep down and recognize that this is a rebuild and you're not just going to wave a magic wand and go grab Brandon Ayuk, who, as Sean said, isn't worth another win to this team. It isn't. It really, you really enough said. And and the idea. Go drive your Accord and be happy. <laughs> yeah, happy you got a car that runs, right? That's kind of where the Denver Broncos are at this point. And, and look, every year there's a handful of wide receivers. That Cortland Sutton was part of it. That wants a new deal and starts making a little bit of noise. Now I has more leverage than Cortland Sutton because I was been on and, a team that's and, consistently and, and, competing and, and, for and a title. Guess what? Shanahan and Lynch know that they have enough talent on that roster. That's where I think about the same thing. Yes. They know they have enough talent on that roster to continue 
to battle for the top spot in the NFC and to go back to the Super Bowl and that they can afford to let Ayuk walk. And they know how talented he is, and even they're thinking it might be time to trade him. But look at the numbers you're talking about now. The, the, uh, the Unreal. Average annual value, and granted, it's a little bit different when you're talking about NFL contracts, but Justin Jefferson reset the market at $35 million. A.J. Brown's at 32. million. Amon Ross St. Brown's at 30. Tyree Kill's at 30. Jalen Waddell is at 28 too. Devontae Adams is at 28. Nico Collins, good wide receiver. He's at 24.2. Yeah, on a scale of 1 to 10, he's a 7. And, and if you're talking about the positions that are getting overpaid right now, it's wide receiver more than anybody. Correct. And that's why in the last two years, you watch Tyreek Hill and Brandon Ayuk probably depart Super Bowl teams because even those teams go, we sign him for that. We can't keep the rest of our things together and make sure we get back at it. Correct. So there's no reason for them to there is absolutely no reason for them to overpay. And as far as I'm concerned, if the Patriots and the Browns are interested, first of all, in my opinion, you should go to the Browns. Why? You want to talk projected win totals? The right. Browns are going to win twice as many games as the Patriots. So if he doesn't want to be frustrated going to a crap team, you better go to Cleveland. Now, at the same time, I'd be willing to bet, even though Bill Belichick is not there anymore, that the Patriots are probably offering a a, 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 a packet of like uh, 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 like fruit snacks and some belly button lint for him because they're notorious for under like, yeah, you think he's worth this. We don't. And that's what they were notorious for doing. And they did it with Belichick. And I'm sure as an organization, they're continuing to do that. So my guess is that the reason this deal has not been done is because both Cleveland and New England know that Lynch right now is between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, because anyone who trades for a who has to sign him. So, I mean, how much are you going to give up knowing that you might be dealing with these same challenges? So that's always a concern. And my guess is that San Francisco probably wants some kind of a first rounder. Right. No, which you're not going to get because someone has sorry, to pay thirty million gonna, dollars. A you're year. not going to. You're and not going to do that. The Denver Broncos are at a point where they should not be giving out that kind of money to a wide receiver. I know. Every, receiver, I know everybody period. wants this team to flip a switch. It's folks. This isn't the switch. This is the old school dimming dial that your grandmother had in the dining room. Yeah, you were just slowly turning it, and eventually the light will come on. But it's not a switch, okay? It's that little off-white cream-colored dial that controlled the dining room lights at Grandma's. Taking shortcuts, Nate, whether you want to say that's Russell Wilson or Joe Flacco. I that, 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 that thought Joe Flacco had something left in the tank. But, but taking shortcuts is what got the Broncos into this mess. Correct. And so the idea that you grab, again, that wide receivers – Talented players, difference makers, but they are the spinning rims of NFL franchises. Okay. When everything else is great, if you have everything else set up, get yourself a wide receiver. Sure. They, they look flashy. They're cool. They can score for you. That's, that's wonderful. But in the end, those are the last things you need to spend big money on because look at who the Broncos have in camp right now. We've talked about it. Now, does the, the production have to hit? Yes. But Sutton, Reynolds, Mims, Patrick, Franklin, these, these are all guys that with, with good pedigrees, and you're five deep. I pointed out Brandon Johnson was the second leading and he receiver won't be in the, touchdowns. He won't be this year. And he won't be this year. But you're talking about a guy that was an undrafted college free agent like Julio McLaughlin and, and performed. A little Jordan Humphrey has played in two different places for, uh, for Sean Payton. You, you have veteran guys in Dorsett and Sills. It's not as if Ayuk wouldn't be better. It's not as if he wouldn't immediately be the best receiver on your team. But we're talking about quarterbacks and wide receivers. And the Broncos offense is not a, a, a receiver away from being explosive. So, and quite frankly, we talked about this yesterday, Nate. Sean Payton's style of offense, he's not looking to build Drew Brees in his prime. He's looking to run a, a power running game with play action. And, and action, action over the middle, not going for the deep shots like we saw with Russell Wilson. That's not what he's after. So uh, you've got to get over that. And when it comes to Justin Simmons, I get it. In Simmons' case, uh, obviously he he's loves Denver. He didn't want to leave Denver. But unless the Broncos are going to pay him a market rate deal, he's going to take the cut rate deal from wherever he wants. Gonna and wait. that's going to be for a good team yeah, where you can wait. go do something he's never done 
in in Denver, and that's make a playoff game because he was he joined the team in 2016. The Broncos went nine and seven that year, his rookie year, and have not had a winning season. Yeah, since. they're not gonna. Um, and and look, he's not gonna sign with somebody like the Pats. He's not gonna sign with the Panthers. He's, he's gonna wait gonna, for the Eagles. Or he's gonna wait for somebody that Cowboys wants to be able to pay him, or somebody who either either pays him big or has a chance to make a run. So because of everybody's infatuation with the fantasy football numbers, when we talk about a guy like Brandon Ayuk, let me yeah. give you let me let me pose a question that should bring your Brandon Ayuk argument to an end. With J.J. McCarthy, tell me how many yards you think Justin Jefferson's going to have. Right. The guy that was not in a run first, run second, run third offense in Michigan. If you go back two years and Justin Jefferson with his 1,800 plus yards, and I, I believe Justin Jefferson, Devontae Adams are 1A and 1B in the National Football League when it comes to I receivers. can't argue that. I believe those are your 1A and 1B. But he now has to catch passes from J.J. McCarthy. So, I mean, what's his drop-off going to be? 1,200 yards? He had 1,000 last year in only 10 games, but he did that with Kirk Cousins. Right. Right? So if he if if he comes into this year, like, I got to be honest with you, man, Justin Jefferson getting 1,200 would be a success to me because it would mean that J.J. McCarthy actually acclimated to the NFL. I'm not sure it's going to happen. Right. And that that's the concern. And look, I am. So, not... that, so I point that out in the same way. If we talk about a Brandon Ayuk, oh, but Nate, Sean, he can also run and he can do fly sweeps and he can. Do you think Sean Payton's running that crap, folks? Not with uh, not with Jared Sidham and Bo Nix. He's not. No. I mean, that's that's so the let uh, let Ayuk move on. Hope that he goes to a place like Cleveland so that if you've got him on your roster for fantasy, that he has some value and leave him off the Broncos roster. Get Brandon Ayuk's name out your mouth. <laughs> there you go. Nate with the uh with the verbal flap, if you will, to fans who are, look, understand where the Broncos are. They are just come on, folks. Be smart. They're okay? rebuilding. Be they smart. Are rebuilding. And by the way, just to put a bow on it, I used to drive an 87 accord. So don't be coming at me with your pissy comments. I know what it feels like. I'm just saying, if you can't afford the nice ride, enjoy the ride you have. Yep. Got it. Better than nothing for okay, sure. Okay, everybody.